Elephant in the hood with it. Welcome back to the Collective Clips where you already know we get it in. But before we get it in, let's hit that like and subscribe button. Ding. Put your notification bell on all so that way you're directed in the dope direction of the dope content that I am kicking. And I highly appreciate all the support, man. We're going up on this channel. It's all because of you. And for that, I can say I'm very humbled and I'm very much so appreciative. So let me tell you guys some shit. Some real life, real talk, right? And let me <clears throat> kind of gauge the hint there. And then I'm going to put it out there how you feel. Maybe you can give me some advice. Maybe I did the right thing or the wrong thing. I don't know. I did the thing what best make, what makes me feel the best, right? Now, I wanted to do a video about YouTubers that have failed. That YouTubers that flopped. YouTubers that lost it all. Were once up here and then pff, fell down, right? But I didn't want to be disrespectful. I didn't want to make it like, ha, 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 shit happens, right? Karma catches up to you. Nah, none of that. Um, because I don't wish... Um, bad things upon no one because I understand that I'm just that close to being in the same boat, right? So I got to humble myself and say, you know, albeit that people have said bad shit about me in the past, I don't wish bad upon no one. You know, the other day it was fucking trending, milk on the calles, sleeping on the concrete right next to the fucking trash can, right? And everybody was saying, damn, milk fell off, milk is homeless, Milk 74 done fucking flipped out and, and, and he's on skid row. And there was a lot of different things being put out there. I did kind of a funny uh, take on it, just giving him a, a hard time, you know, roasting him a little bit. But at the same time, um, I don't wish that upon no one, man. I don't want to see you homeless out there suffering. Um, that's a bad look. That's a bad thing. And um, I've been there. You know, I was homeless for all of six hours. And I can tell you right now, those were the worst six hours of my life. I needed to get somewhere and I got somewhere. Um, of course, I was of sound mind. I didn't have no mental problems or or anything like that. So I was thinking straight. And I got put in that situation because of family. Because family was going through hardships. And I just got out of prison and I was staying with family. So they gave me the boot. Because they were going through their own shit. And I recognized and I understood. And I don't have no ill will towards that family. I still fuck with them. I still love them. Um, family does what they do. They were helping me out in the first place. So I understood when they couldn't facilitate the help anymore. Someone had to go. And it was me. So I was out on them streets, but I knocked me a big one, a big one, 350. Mm -hmm. And I was eating honeycombs in the morning. So I had to do what I had to do to get in. But, you know, when, when Milk was taking pictures, pictures that he posted himself in a tent, I believe he was okey dokeying people, right? He was uh, doing shock value. Now, what I'm hearing is that, that Milk's channel is demonetized. Someone pressed an issue on him. I'm not going to say who because I don't know. But someone felt that he was either disrespecting them or using their content without asking. And they reported him. And subsequently, when you get reported several times um, and it's the truth, right? And you are using other people's content or you are fucking up. Then these types of things will happen. And if you're depending upon... Uh, your content creation, YouTube to be your only source of income. Well, the man, that's you're playing with fire, right? So that can make you from having bread to having fucking nothing, like Jesus said, right? And my thing is, if you're making good money, why not save a little bit? But you know, everybody likes to fuck money off and have a good time. You got it, you spend it. You know, it burns holes in your pockets. But I don't think milk is homeless. I don't think milk is living that way. I think this was just another way to keep his name popping, to troll a little bit, to uh, get attention. It's what Milk does, you know? So can I say that he's in the category of a YouTuber that failed? Nah, I believe Milk will be back popping. I believe he will be back with his shenanigans and talking his shit. You know, it's just a matter of time, but he is demonetized. He is at the point now in his channel where it's it doesn't make no sense doing content, I guess, because he's not getting money from it. And there's a lot of people that if they're not getting money, they're not going to do this shit straight up. So that's where he stands. But I talked to somebody and they said, that bottle ain't fucking homeless. That bottle's trolling everyone. He's just keeping his name popping. It's what you do. It's a tactic. It's part of the game. But let's talk about Big Flacco from a convict's perspective, right? Now, you guys all know that me and Flacco have not seen eye to eye for a very long time, right? Do I downplay Flacco's contribution to my channel and my initial mindset to start a channel? I don't. Because... When I first got into this shit, 
I wasn't going to start a YouTube channel. I wasn't going to do none of that. This wasn't for me. I didn't know anything about YouTube, right? Um, but this Vato seen that I had the potential, the charisma, or whatever it was to do one. So he did get in my ear. He did reach out. This is four and a half years ago. And he was like, hey, bro, maybe you should start a YouTube channel. Maybe, maybe it would work for you. And that was it. He planted a seed and I ran with it and I did my thing. Now, from that point on, it wasn't like Flacco helped me anymore. It wasn't like he called me every day and uh, gave me topic ideas or made thumbnails for me or did anything. In fact, let's reverse the situation. I felt encumbered to help him in his channel, what he was doing with Big Rojo. They had their channel, a convex perspective. So I would tap in and help make thumbnails and help come up with topic ideas and just help because I felt like, hey, as content creators, we should stick together and we can get further helping each other. It's kind of like what I do with, with Dubs. The only difference is me and Dubs bounce ideas off each other. We help each other, right? That's a fact. But with uh, Flacco, it was never none of that. In fact, I started to notice hatred. And I'm going to tell you about a phone call, man. So one day I'm on the phone with Rojo. This is back in the days. And we're chopping it up and talking about whatever, how the wind was blowing. And I guess he gets a three-way phone call or he gets a call from Flacco. So he's like, hey, bro, just stay on the line. I'm going to put you on mute. I'm going to chop it up with this cat for a few seconds and then we'll get back to it. And about this time, Flacco and Rojo were not seen eye to eye. They were, even though they were business partners, man, um, Flacco was doing some wild shit. He was starting to fall off. He was starting to uh, try to dictate that channel's programs. This is the truth. This is behind the scenes what was going on, right? And Rojo was not feeling that. I could tell he wasn't feeling that, right? And we discussed it and I told him, hey, bro, maybe you should start your own channel. Um, distance yourself from this guy because this guy's all over the place, man. I don't know if he's on dope. I don't know if he's just hating. I don't know, man, but this is how I feel, bro. And this ain't nothing I wouldn't tell him myself, but this is just how I feel. You know, I was just giving friendly advice. That's how you do it. And... um. I had just dropped a video like maybe an hour before and it was doing good views, whatever. So I was cool with that. And uh, this is back when I used to get a gang of views or whatever. I was popping, right? And so I'm on the phone. I'm on, I'm on mute, whatever. And the first thing Flacco says when he gets on that phone is, damn, that fucking fool Gunner fucking, he just dropped the video. He's doing hella views, man. Fuck that fool. That, few ain't, that fool's channel ain't better than ours and just started talking hella shit about me. And I really wanted to press some mute and, say, and slap him upside the head with some fucking verbalization, right? But that allowed me to realize how he really felt, right? But here's the kicker. So I was like, mm, okay, now I know how this dude feels. I already felt it. I felt the hate. I felt it from a distance. And so I could see Rojo cut the, the conversation off quick. He's like, oh, bro, because he knew I'm on the other line. Like, fuck, right? So then when he gets back, he hangs up with Flacco. He fucking gets on the line. He's like, yeah, bro, you know how that fool is. He just, whatever. I said, nah, it's cool. I see it. And I thought to myself, maybe these conversations are, these conversations are meant to be had without me. So, you know, it was handled the way it was handled. But at the end of the day, you know, Flacco's being allowed to say this shit and to talk this shit, right? Cool. That, that stood with me. 10 minutes later, I'm off the phone. And I get a phone call from guess who? Flacco. And the first thing he says, oh, what's up, bro? Oh, you just dropped the video. How's it doing? Oh, it's doing good, huh? Oh, that's cool. That's right, bro. Keep pushing. Well, goddamn, you wanted to push me up out the way just five minutes ago, right? But I know that's how it is. So from that point on, I, I, I fed him with the long-handled spoon. I knew what time it was, and I started to distance myself. Not because of any of the shit that people were saying. Not be, I'm not going to judge a man by what his past or what people are saying. I'm not going to do no crimes with them. I'm not going to be around him doing no dirt. I know that for a fact, but I'm not going to judge that man, right? And I start to notice things happen. So I kind of forgive, forgive and forget. And, you know, I start to notice, man, I'm getting trolled and things are happening more so. So I'm going to tell you guys another little thing that happens. So a video gets dropped. Early in the morning, I wake up one morning and it's some fucking troll hater talking shit about me and putting out there, um, trying to dox my family or whatever, right? Put family's addresses out there and I get pissed. And so I'm pissed. I'm like, all right, cool. 
I don't know who to trust. I don't know who to fuck with, man. Seems like the guys that were closest to me were the ones fucking uh, uh, pushing uh, uh, info to these haters, right? And it was. It was the truth, right? So I sit back, and I'm not saying Big Rojo was doing this. I'm saying I felt like Flocka was doing this, right? And this is just the way I felt. I couldn't trust them, right? So I sat back, and I waited. Sure enough, about 15 minutes later, on cue, Flocka calls me, right? And the first thing he says, oh, what's up, bro? How you doing? And I could tell he's trying to fish. He's trying to gauge if I've seen the video, right? So I said, and I'm mad. I'm pissed. And anyone that's ever seen me mad, I get this attitude. And I know the attitude. I don't give a fuck. Fuck what you're talking about. That's me, right? So I'm like, hey, bro. He was like, what are you, what are you doing right now? I said, I'm at my homeboy's house. He's a hacker. He's about to get the IP address and hack this fucking someone who just dropped a video on me. Um, we got it. He's locking it in right now. In about two minutes, he's going to have the whole address. And I'm feeling, you know what I mean? I'm feeling some type of way. And he says, oh, shit. Hey, wait up. I'm getting another call. I got to go. Right? And hangs up. Sure enough, a minute later, that video gets taken down. Okay, I'm not, I'm not a stupid man. I understand what's going on here. So I voiced that to a couple of homies. They said, yeah, bro, yeah, that's pretty much what it is. So I was, again, feeling some type of way. So it was at that point right there, I said, I can't fuck with this cat, man. He can't call me anymore with, hey, bro, I need this, or hey, bro, I need that, or uh, just to talk, right? I'm, we're not friends no more. And he felt that. And there was an incident where I went to Las Vegas and I did a live and I was faded, man. I was drinking. What had happened was me and the homeboys went to Vegas and I was supposed to, we went partying all weekend. We're at the clubs, clubbing, doing our thing. And I was supposed to leave that morning, like at six in the morning, but I ain't going to lie. What had happened was <laughs> my ass didn't wake up. I woke up about 630. I missed my flight, but I thought I had get backs because what had happened that particular day was at Har what is it Harry Harry's National or Harvey whatever the fucking name of is that of that airport someone had dropped a suitcase off the top tier right they had dropped a suitcase off the top and everybody took off running because they thought it was gunshots in there and it was on the news we had the news on homeboys are waking up their flight to San Jose was at 10 o'clock so they still had time I'm up the homies like damn you missed your flight I'm like I'm still drunk right I'm like oh fuck right um and come to find out, I seen that and I was like, oh, maybe I could say that I was one of the people that was there, but I ran and, and, and got away from the situation and I tried to play them. They weren't buying it, right? So I had to get out of homeboy. Um, he got me a ticket. We got a, another, another ticket, but my flight wasn't going to leave to the next day. So I stood at the airport. The homeboys took off and I had to wait to the next day. So I went and checked into the Rio, right? The Rio went down, gambled a little bit, started drinking, got fucked up, decided to go upstairs to my room and go live. Those that have been with me for a long time remember this. So I went live, okay? And while I'm going live, I have about three, 400 people in there. So the chat's going fast. I'm on my phone, so it's harder to control the live. And I'm fucked up, faded, and I'm just having a good time. And I start to notice in the live, there's some, some things being said. I'm getting trolled, gang of trolls in there, people talking shit. And this troll keeps on saying things that only myself and Flacco knew. You know, Flacco had been to my family's pads. He had been to certain places and he's mentioning things that only he would know. So I, I felt like it was him talking shit and trolling. So I went all out and I did a verbal assault, right? And I was like, fuck you. I got, I was fed up with all this different bullshit. So I finally let it out. And, um, next day videos are made. Flacco's feeling some type of way. And from that point on, we were not cool no more. There was no more friendship, right? And I'm not going to lie, we did have conversations after that um, where I tried to rectify the situation like, hey, bro, if that wasn't you, my bad. But at the same time, I still, there's still too, either you you told someone something or I just can't trust you, bro. You be recording the call and like you be doing too much, right? That's how I felt. Just how I felt. And whatever. So everything was cool. And I would, and there's people that know I would have conversations with Flocka behind the scenes, like trying to. You know, he was going at it with another channel. I was trying to fucking kill that noise. You know, the drama is, is not meant to be put on YouTube. It's not meant for that. And so, and these are facts. This shit that's never got put out there. And I was catching heat from, from my homies for even talking to this cat. But I was trying to help it so that, you know, there was no more drama between the two. Whatever, right? 
um, about the time everybody start, started to fall off and, and distance themselves from me for whatever reasons they had, still some of the reasons I don't even know, um, but it was the Mean Girls Club. It was the cool thing to do at that time. Everybody was getting on the train, right? Bunch of cabooses thinking they're on the train, right? So that whatever, cool. I ain't going to talk shit. Um, Flacco started making rap songs about me, disses about me, because he was going off of what other people were telling him when quietly as it's kept, I could give a fuck less that about the died yesterday. Being honest, that's how I felt. I don't feel that way now, but that's how I felt then. I didn't care about none of them cats. If they tripped, fell, and landed on something, that's on them, bro. You know, uh, they were into that anyways. That's how I felt. So, I distanced myself. I ain't fucking with none of you cats, right? And I didn't have no, I didn't say nothing about what the rap songs Flocka was making and all the disrespect he was doing and all that. But then, I started to notice a change in him. I started to notice, you know, that lasts only so long. It's how it is on YouTube. It has a small shelf life, brother. No legs. Then it runs out. And then they start going in on each other and cannibalizing each other or the next channel or the next channel. That's what shit does. That's why motherfuckers never come up and prosper because they're too busy worried about the other man than focusing on themselves. Fact. So I started to notice the decline of Flacco, man. I started to notice he was losing weight. He was looking stressed out. Then he caught his case, man. Um, and everybody was making videos about... Why'd he do it? How'd it happen? And I made one video during that whole time. And it was, man, I send my prayers to this guy. We need to help this guy. We need to stand in his corner and help him rather than tear him down. Done that, right? That's me. That's my style. I'm not going to spit on you when you're down. I'm not going to step on or stomp on you when you're down. I'm going to try to fucking put my hand, extend my hand to lift you up. I ain't fucking with you. You're on your own. But I don't want to see you down there, homie. I'd rather see you up there where you can walk a little bit. Let's equalize the situation. And that was it. And so he started to do his own thing. He he went in the jail, came out, got bailed out or whatever on his case. I didn't focus on his case. That was his business, his drama, his shit, right? Could care less, really, to be honest with you. It doesn't affect me. Um, but it affects someone who I once considered as a friend. So from a distance, I felt bad. I kept up with it. And I started to notice his decline, his demise in YouTube, right? And just recently, he's gotten locked up, you know, and he was looking very bad. A shell of himself, you know. Um, And there's a lot of people with a lot of fucking shit to say. Oh, he's on Skonte. Oh, he's on Fant. Oh, that vault is fucked up. Whatever he's on or whatever he's doing, that's his shit. That's his prerogative. Like Bobby, people were still buying albums and Bobby was yayed out, right? So that's that's his shit. But I want to tell you guys something that happened. Two females reached out to me yesterday, right? One of the homegirls, she's been following me for a while, my channel. For a while there, she, she, her and her old man, they kind of disappeared and were doing their own things. Just recently, they've come back onto the channel. I've always respected them, um, always recognized the fact and appreciate the fact that they support my channel. But for a while, they were doing their own thing. I understand life takes you different directions or whatever. I used to watch other lives and they'd be on other lives and, and I always wondered why they weren't on my lives or whatever, but it's cool. You know, I understand, man, when there's a lot of people saying a lot of shit, a lot of people want to distance themselves from that. They don't want to be a part of that. So whatever, right? But the homegirl gets at me and she's like, hey, man, that she talked to Flacco, her and her old man, that he's doing bad with Canteen, that he's doing bad. He's falling all the way off, that he needs help. Would I be willing to help him? Right now, Flacco didn't make rap songs about them with wet this and all this and I'll do that to you and I'll fucking whatever. It's all talk. Right. But he didn't talk shit about their family and them and disrespect them and, 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 and lie in some cases on them. So I could understand them getting at me thinking, OK, maybe they don't know this. So maybe the relationship between me and Flacco is cool. Like, hey, the homie needs help. The homie, your homie, not mine. Used to be my homie. Now he acts like he don't know me. Or I get, I don't know him for whatever reasons, right? I'm telling you guys the reasons. And I was like, hmm, when I heard that, all right, cool. I let it sink in. I imagined me being locked up, doing bad, struggling, starving, because I've been there, man. None of the homies, all the homies from the audio, and I was active at the time. None of the homies sending me nada. No one cares. Everyone want to go to your old ladies and party and barbecue over there and eat big ass ribs while your ass is locked up. Also, how it goes down, right? True stories. And 
taking your clothes and your shoes and all your shit and hey let me borrow this you know manipulating your old lady oh yeah now the homie said they ain't talked to the homie because the homie said fuck no right but that's how it is so i thought about that and then i also thought about it from the angle damn someone needs my help that was disrespecting me and again i know flock so i was like maybe he's not saying particularly to ask me but he just told him this is how he's doing and they are being cool being kind asking me so my first instinct was, fuck that. He's on his own, right? Then another homegirl got at me. She was like, damn, bro. You know what I mean? Fault is doing bad. Um, maybe you should look out. And I said, why should I look out? You know, if it was a reverse, would he even give a fuck about me? Right? But you can't think that way. You can't think of what about me all the time. So what I do yesterday let me explain to you guys exactly what I did. I got up off my ass on my day off from work, right? Took my ass to Walmart to Walmart, they see, and made a little money order. And I'm going to mail that motherfucker out today, right? Now, why do I owe this man anything? Someone who disrespected my family, myself, um, made rap songs about me, tried to get my channel shut down, um, Talk so much shit about me to other people. Do I owe him anything? I don't owe him a goddamn thing. But as a man, it makes me feel better. And it makes me say, you know what? You can't leave authors like that when they're down. You can't kick them when they're down. So there's a lot of people. Homeboy. I told my homeboy that yesterday. He was like, damn, well, fuck that dude, bro. That dude talked all that shit. Leave him where he's at. He's going to stay where he's at. But if I can send him a little something and get a few bars of soap and a couple of sopas, then as a man, I'm going to do that because I never had any of my righteous homeboys do that for me. I told you one homeboy sent me $10 the whole time I've ever been locked up in 19 fucking years. I got one caja of sopas and a bar of soap from a homeboy. And that's that was the best shit ever. I'll never forget it. He'll forever be in my favor. I'll forever, forever to the day I die. Remember, I'll take that with me to the grave, man. That's the one homie that I know out of everybody was my homie, right? Um, so yeah, that's where I'm at. You know, YouTubers fail sometimes. Sometimes they go through some shit. It ain't all about YouTube. It's how you handle it. A lot of people have been asking, what's the fucking shit with you and Flacco? Why? Well, you know, sometimes when people make mistakes or they do what they do, you're judged by their shit. I'm all kinds of rats and punks and, and informants and all that because of the people I hung around with. But that's never been me. Okay? Did I catch a lot of heat? Yes. Do I continue to catch a lot of heat? Yes. Right? But that don't mean I'm going to leave a motherfucker in the dust. Here, Holmes. Here's a little bread. That's all I could do. Now I'm going to scratch you off the telephone book. With that being said, man, let's recap. Milk, he ain't homeless. He's trying to fucking troll everyone and just clown. Flacco, he is struggling. And I looked out. And that's the backstory on why I had to think about it. Thumbs up or thumbs down. Heavy's going to be the head that wears the crown. I'm going to continue to strive, struggle, and struggle and strive for what I truly believe in. And that's the betterment of all people. I'm not the most fucked. I'm not the best man. I'm not flawless. I make mistakes too. And I would hope in the future someone would say, you know what, gun? That's a righteous thing. I'm not doing it for fucking clout. I'm not doing it for whatever. I'm doing it because it's the right thing to do. The gun.